What's going on YouTube Metal Complex here and today I've got kind of a surprise review for everybody. This is the Zero Tolerance 0801 Rexford design. You can see right there S35VN Rexford design. Full titanium construction. This is a zero tolerance knife that uh, I had kind of forgotten about and my buddy Greg who I used to work with, with at the dealership. Actually a few of his knives have been on this channel. Uh, one of my oldest videos the ZT0303 that big monster dinosaur ZT knife. Uh, that was actually Greg's. He, uh, he came up to me and said, hey, have you ever reviewed this? And he just handed it to me, um, which is why uh, I there's no unboxing for this. Um, but the first impressions occurred all at once right there. Um, so uh, I never did the unboxing. But I thought uh, in any case, I was like, oh, yeah, of course, I forgot about this model. This is definitely one that I should take a look at. So, Greg, thank you very much for doing that. Um, as usual, there's going to be... Uh, links down in the description. Um, if you're watching this because you've got the itch and you are looking for a new knife, um, I've got you covered. I've got things sorted out. Some of the most popular EDC folding knives of all time mixed with some stuff that I just really like. Um, so you can go down there and check it out. I've got high price stuff. I've got um, some budget stuff kind of put together in categories, some knife maintenance stuff, some tools, etc. There's something down there for literally everything. Jump into this uh, and get an overall measurement here. Overall length of the ZT0801. It's coming in at about eight and a quarter inches. That's a sweet spot for me. I don't know about you. Uh, how about blade length? Blade length, we're definitely coming in over three and a half, uncontroversially over three and a half, probably about 3.6. Your cutting edge is coming in at exactly, I mean, it starts right there. There's no uh, sharpening twill on this. 3.5 inches of sharpened blade. Um, so that's nice. That's definitely gonna be kind of a sweet spot for a lot of people. How about some size comparisons up against the Ontario Rat Model 1? Rat 1 coming in a hair longer at about 8.6 inches overall. How about up against the Spyderco PM2? Spyderco PM2 is coming in at 8.3 inches overall. So again, just a hair longer, though the, the uh, camera angle is making them look almost exactly the same. How about against another a really popular zero tolerance knife that's about the same length? The ZT0562, which I still have for my buddy Raw. These are both owned by gentlemen who I worked with at the dealership and I actually convinced both of them to become knife guys. I convinced Rob uh, to buy his 0562 and then I got Greg into ZT knives and then he just kept buying them. So thanks guys, I appreciate it. Uh, the ZT0562 uh, and 0801 have very similar overall handle lengths, overall blade lengths and overall cutting edges though the blade shape and overall profile is different. So I think that's a really good size comparison there. How about up against the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue. Ritter Hogue coming in at eight inches overall, so just a little bit shorter there. And last but not least today, because I left the pair of three upstairs, we're gonna be comparing it just with the Benchmade Bug Out. Benchmade Bug Out is coming in at about 7.5 inches overall. So how's the action on this guy? Well, this is a typical zero tolerance. This is, bef this is one of their last really kind of mega, uh, I wouldn't call it mega overbuilt and heavy duty, but definitely is, you know, thick titanium, uh, thick slab of steel there. Um, it has that very like, bam, ZT action. This is a, you know, it's not a big, as big a clunker as some of the other ZT models that, uh, you know, have come out in recent years um, or in, in the past, I guess I should say. But it is definitely, it does feel very ZT, you know. Uh, it's got incredible action. Um, this uh, ZT is uh, known for getting their detent just right. I'll let you guys take a look here. Uh, very nice clicky detent. Uh, good flipper tab. Uh, definitely very reliable, and uh, this is one that I can that will almost fall shed. It just takes a little bit of encouragement, though. This is very, very new. Um, a recent purchase by Greg. Though I want to point out, this is not a new model from ZT. Most people know this. This model's been out for a long time. In fact, there have been different designs. There's been an all black wash one. There's been another titanium one with like vertical lines. This is a variation of it with the uh, the milling pattern here and the holes. You know, it's it's different. Now, I don't know for sure. It seems like this model is being discontinued. Um, I will provide a link in the description for this knife if you want to purchase it through me. As far as I understand, at the exact date of this video, this knife is actually on sale. Um, so it's kind of weird when I provide a link. You know, if you're watching this a year or two in the future, then the sale on my link may not do you any good. I don't know, <laughs> just trying to keep it streamlined and smooth. So, um, you know, uh, that, that's I guess that's all I can really say about that. Um, we'll talk about price here in, in just a little bit. 
given that it is still an available knife, I feel obligated to give it a full review and not a not just an overview, if that makes any sense. Let's go ahead and weigh it. This is uh, this is a it's two thick pieces of titanium, and while the pieces of titanium are milled out at least on one side, actually, do we have milling on the other side? Uh, we do not. It is thick titanium. This is going to be a heavy guy. Uh, overall weight, yeah, 5.5 ounces. Though I know a lot of people cringe at that. Let's weigh the famous 0562 with G10 and titanium 5.64 so for everybody wanting to cringe at that if you were a fan of the zt0562 and you've been carrying it this guy is not going to be that big of a deal you're getting full titanium uh and honestly just about the same thickness i mean it doesn't look yeah i mean this it's weird the zt i guess is a little bit longer in the handle but uh yeah it's not really that heavy for a full tie knife now, for a lot of people, though, five and a half ounces is just simply too heavy. It doesn't matter what it's made out of or how big or small it is. It's just too heavy, and I completely understand that. I would not have a problem uh, carrying this knife. This is definitely not going to be a basketball shorts type of knife or a thin pant material type of knife. This is going to be heavy-duty pant material, jeans, things like that. So whether or not you carry it in an office or an outdoor setting is completely up to you, but I would say this is more of an outdoor work knife than anything else. Let's go ahead and talk about the anatomy here real quick. We have a uh, very, very um, Rexford style drop point blade. And when I say that, you know, it's it's like, what are you talking about? It just looks like a regular knife. If you look up Rexford designs, they're very, it's like, oh yeah, they all of his knives like are very, very similar. In fact, um, the 0804 CF that I got from uh, uh, a buddy on uh, Instagram, I think that was also a Rexford design. And it's, it has kind of that look to it. It's straightforward, but it also has kind of unique lines that are indicative of Rexford. If you look up his stuff, if you're not familiar with his stuff, you're going to know exactly what I'm talking about here. Um, we do have a flat that runs about 70% the length of the blade, carrying some pretty decent thickness out there to the tip. Let's go ahead and get a uh, measurement there on the spine. I'm going to guess typical ZT 150, 155 thousandths. Yeah, 150 thousandths it looks like. That's pretty... Pretty typical ZT. ZT does a good job with their edges despite their blades being a little bit thick. So while this uh, this knife is definitely not going to be able to perform surgery on a grape, which is not something I've ever had to do with a D as, uh, an EDC knife, um, it is definitely going to cut and it's going to cut the things that um, you, you would uh, ask this knife to cut. Um, so I think that's just fine. Like I said, lots of strength down to the tip. So you can see there, there's a lot of material. This isn't a blade that I'd worry about snapping off. It's also in CPM S35VN, which is a stainless steel, uh, notorious for having pretty darn good edge retention and pretty good toughness, especially for a stainless steel. And it should be relatively easy to resharpen, even for somebody like me who's still kind of a novice. So if you're in that department, I, I wouldn't shy away from this. I also think it's probably one of the best uh, steel choices for a, uh, a knife in this uh, caliber. Um, there is no jimping up top. I always like jimping, but I'm having more and more and more people tell me like, hey, listen, I don't care if it's up there or not. So some people like jimping, some people don't. I always like it, you know, if I can get it, great, you know, but that's how I use my knives. Sometimes I put pressure down on the spine, no big deal. Um, nice, uh, nice um, chamfering, is, they've knocked the corners down here. That's the tumbling that's on the ZT blade. You can see there that's knocked those corners down. So no sharp edges anywhere like that. Curiously, there's just no sharpening, it just ends right there. That's kind of weird looking, but that's how that is. Okay, whatever. You know, uh, it's not going to stop. That's never stopped me from buying a knife. It's annoying, but it hasn't stopped me. The nice thing about this is there's really nothing in the cutting path. So if you want to push straight down and do a heavy push cut with the material all the way up against the backside of the blade, you're going to be able to do that. Um, taking a look at the titanium, the titanium is beautiful. It's got uh, kind of a matte bead blasted finish. It's got some nice milling around the outside and then it's flat up on top. You can see they've done uh, some lips here. They've chamfered the inside of those cutouts. It's really, really cool looking. I don't generally like holes in the handle, but I like that. It's nice. It's also a very ergonomic shape. This has a very natural feeling um, handle. I can just barely get, well, I say just barely. The handle is obviously meant to tightly get four fingers around. There's really only one true position to put your hand in, but that one position is very comfortable and I don't have a problem with that. You have a T8 uh, pivot and then you have, ah, let's find out what those are. Uh, this is my Wea Bit Selector, which is again down in the uh, description if you'd like to purchase that for yourself. Very inexpensive, awesome uh, item there. 
No, it's not T8, but it doesn't look like a T6. It looks like a T7. So here's where, here's our T7 here. Um, is it a T7? No, it's a T6. Okay, so it's a T6. I don't like uh, I don't like T6. Let's do it on camera uh, just so we can make sure. But uh, I'm not I'm not the biggest fan of T6. Yeah, it's definitely T6. We a magnetic driver, by the way, too. That couples really well with this guy. I know ad break right in the middle of the review, right? Um, but these are these are really good items. I use them all the time for knife maintenance and disassembly. Um, but uh, yeah, T6 is not my favorite, and there's three of them with three standoffs. And again, it's it sucks, but it's not something that's going to dissuade me from purchasing a knife. I mean, like I would be so limited. I I don't like T6, but I would be so limited if I was just like I'm not going to buy anything that's got T6 handle screws. So for right now, I'm having to deal with it, but I hope that changes in the future. Not that big of a deal. So we've got three T6 screws, three standoffs back here. That's definitely going to be very strong. Pillar construction, um, not going to be able to like squish it or anything like that. Absolutely. Easy to clean out. So that's nice. Uh, the lanyard hole is definitely out of the way, and it's big enough to fit some 550 through. Um, blade doesn't uh, touch it or anything like that or come close. Uh, we do have a, a very plain zero tolerance deep carry clip on there. Uh, it's okay. Um, in my experience, you know, these do well. It's very similar to the uh, deep carry clip that you might see on a standard Benchmade. I feel like the Benchmade is a little bit more robust and I like it a little bit more. This is plain, it's painted, it's definitely gonna scratch up. If it breaks off though, ZT is pretty good about providing a new clip, so there's never really an, an issue there. It also is very easy to get this knife in and out of the pocket and it carries deep enough that, uh, you know, I enjoy it. Now, just keep in mind their, uh, their screws are not recessed. They are a little bumpy. And the, while the pocket clip is nice and flat and doesn't run the risk of catching on anything, it is, you're going to have to fight it just a little tiny bit at the top. Again, not something that should dissuade anybody from purchasing this knife. You do have a steel lock bar insert that doubles as the over travel stop. You can see there we're coming in at pretty typical ZT lockup, something around 30%. Uh, full engagement on the steel lock bar insert. No, uh, doesn't feel like any risk of, I'm pushing pretty hard on the spine here. Doesn't feel like any risk of disengagement. There's also no blade play whatsoever. It feels like a very powerful, very hard lockup. We do have a captive pivot on the other side, which is nice uh, when you're making adjustments to this knife or taking it apart. You don't have to stick another Torx bit into one, so you don't have to do this. That's a, that's a recipe for um, shooting the knife off the edge of the table or worse, back at yourself. So that's always nice. Um, to uh, have that in there. Um, really, the construction all the way around is great. I mean, my only complaints, I, the fit and finish is excellent too, by the way. There's no sharp corners on this thing anywhere. The flipper tab is designed well. It's essentially the reverse of a hinderer flipper tab, which is it, it, much more convenient. The jimping is not so sharp that it's gonna bother you for if you wanna sit on the couch and play with this and flip it over and over and over again. Um, but uh, at the same time, it catches your finger enough to make sure that it is going to deploy every single time. It's kind of up at an angle, mixed between push button and light switch, very comfortable, very organic feeling. Anybody can pick this thing up and know how to flip it right off the bat. The landing zone for your finger is also super smooth. They've even knocked down the corners on the inside of this, which is something that ZT typically does. It's really set up to be a good working tool and at the same time be very friendly to people who just like to buy knife, nice knives and play with them. I, I'm in both categories, guys. I'll sit around and play with my knives while I watch videos like this on the weekend. I know that's what some of you guys are doing. You're just watching knife stuff to watch stuff and you've got your favorite knife out and you're flipping it. I know because <laughs> I like to do that too. ZT does a good job of catering to people like that. And this is one of those knives. It's fun, but at the same time, it's a very reliable tool. It's made out of really good materials, heavy duty titanium on both sides, S35VN. It's in a blade shape that's definitely gonna emphasize performance mixed with a little bit of durability. There's also shouldering back here um, on the back of the blade, which means that blade's gonna wrap all the way around the uh, stop pin uh, for uh, maximizing the surface contact since there's no external stop pins or anything like that, which is great. That's gonna help slow down lock bar wear over time. Really, really a great, um, a great knife. You know, I don't have a lot of negative to say about it, honestly. Um, now, I think the original price on this guy was a pretty good price. S35VN made 100% in the United States, full titanium, 6L4V titanium, running on bearings, um, great design. I think originally they were asking 220 for it. Now I've seen, again, you gotta, you gotta check the date on the video. Um, I think Blade HQ is having a sale on this guy right now, $189. I've seen him in a few other places between $185 and $189. You can check my link 
I'm going to imagine it's going to, the Amazon prices will go up and down on this guy. You can check it if you want. Um, but, uh, you know, wherever, you know, if you're interested in specifically this knife and, and there's a better deal to be had somewhere, then yeah, obviously, you know. Now, if you want something else, I've got other stuff down there. But for this knife specifically, I want to be honest with everybody. Buy it wherever you're going to get the best deal. My uh, my final thoughts on this guy is even if it was $220, I would still give this knife a thumbs up. I think this thing is awesome. Um, I don't like the T6 screws, um, but that's about it. <laughs> I think it's a little weird that there's no sharpening choil, but uh, this is a great knife. Greg, this is going to serve you well for forever, man. I, this is just an awesome knife. It's going to be a little bulky for some people. It's definitely not going to be for everybody. I think the aesthetic is going to throw some people. Some people are going to like it. Some people aren't. The nice thing about having this full titanium frame, this kind of this matte bead blast finish is that people who know how to anodize their stuff... This is kind of a blank canvas. You can kind of, you can have some fun with this. You want to, you want to go rainbow, you want to go blue or brown, or uh, you want to do some w wild stuff with patterns. I mean, people are getting better and better and better at that. So I always see a lot of, of wide variety of like unique customized uh, uh, sort of anno jobs on these. And I, I think that's cool, you know? Um, I will, uh, I will add one negative here and I should have brought that up before I was like, yeah, it's great. There is one negative to this and one, one big thing. Um, and for some people, it's going to stop you from buying it. And for, for other people, it's not. There is a little bit of a double clutch on the flipper tab. It depends on where you're putting your thumb. If you're like me and you like to jam it way up here, yeah, that's double clutch city right there. See that? It's having trouble um, staying over the detent ball. You can move your finger back a little bit, but you risk the further back you go, the risk you risk that thing missing your finger and the blade coming down on your finger. Sorry if I'm making people cringe, but you really have to get it in just the right place and then move your, see, I'm I'm back over the detent ball now. So, and then you got to kick it shut and do that risky guillotine thing. Eh, you'll adapt to it. It's no different than the ZT0562. The, those of you who've been carrying the 0562 and you're aware of the double clutch and you've made it work, you've adapted to it and figured it out, it's just as easy to get around it with the 0801. But for people who don't want to mess with it, the 0801 might not be for you. This is another excellent knife from Zero Tolerance and it's also about to be um, kind of an, an extinct. I mean, ZT is just putting all of these heavier models down. You know, that sounds really dark, but it's it's literally like they're just taking them all out into a field and just putting them out of their misery. Or that's that's not the right uh, analogy because everybody loves these, right? And they're not in misery. Um, I, I I love these uh, these heavy-duty overbuilt ZT models, but um, I, ZT's uh, going their own way. Hopefully, the, uh, hopefully uh, there are enough people in the knife community who feel the same way as me, um, you know, kind of... Uh, uh, saying the same thing, you know, that it causes ZT maybe to at least cater a little bit more to people like that. I mean, it's okay to make some some really light, small knives, some more delicate, uh, some more dressy knives, and at the same time make some heavy-duty overbuilt models, but it seems like it's more of uh, the, the fancy stuff here lately with a very few kind of not super light heavy-duty models. The 0801 is definitely going to be missed. While it wasn't as popular as some of the other mega overbuilt knives that ZT made, it's definitely an excellent knife. Um, so uh, hope you guys uh, enjoyed this review. That's pretty much going to be it. Uh, if you did enjoy this video, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on this Metal Complex logo right here and subscribe because there's definitely more content coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.